Hello Brighouse High School and welcome to this online tutorial which today is going to be focusing on the components of fitness. Hopefully by the end of today's lesson you'll be able to do a number of things. Firstly you'll be able to identify the 11 components that make up fitness. You'll be able to define what each component means and what it means to fitness as an individual. And lastly you'll be able to attribute or assign each component to a specific sport. So, fitness is the general term used to describe how physically fit an individual is, such as Mo Farah, who you may describe as being a fit athlete. However, within GCSE PE, we can break fitness down into different components so that we can describe it more specifically and make it more relevant to performer, such as the sumo wrestler who you've seen on your screen now, who can be fit, but wouldn't necessarily be fit for more Farah's event. Fitness is divided into 11 different components that clearly define a specific aspect of fitness. So the two images that, that just come up now of a ballet dancer and a jockey, they would have different components of fitness that make them good at their specific sport. The first task I would like you to do is identify or create a list of what you think the 11 components of fitness are. For example, balance is one of those components. If you stop the video now, try and get as many as you can, and then when you're ready, restart the video and see how well you did. So, let's see how well you did. The 11 components of fitness are as follows. Muscular endurance, body composition, balance, speed, flexibility, power, strength, agility, coordination, reaction time, and cardiovascular endurance. You need to be able to memorize each of those 11 components. What we're going to try and do now is see whether you can match each of those components to the 11 different sports that are now on your screen. So again, pause the video when you're ready and see if you can work out what each component would be best suited and most suitable for the sports shown there. If you'd like to stop the video now, give that a go. Right, now that you've given that a go, let's see how well you did. So, cardiovascular endurance would be best suited to a long distance runner. Muscular endurance would be best suited to the cyclist. Strength, weightlifting. Flexibility would be the gymnast. Body composition, that was quite a difficult one, that would be assigned to the sumo wrestler. Speed to the sprinter. Power to the shot put, agility to the football player, balance to the dancer, coordination to the tennis player, and reaction time to the goalkeeper. Now you may have got those sports slightly the other way around, and that's not a problem because you can actually assign each of those components to different sports. But the question was, which would be most suitable? So hopefully you're somewhere in the region of those answers there. So... From those 11 components, we can subdivide them into two different groups. The first group is called health-related components. And these are the components that are required for day-to-day -day living and that people would naturally acquire. So everyone has a standard level of cardiovascular endurance just to do everyday tasks. Everyone's got a standard level of strength to do everyday tasks, such as picking a school bag up. The next set of components, however, are called skill related. And as it clearly defines in the term skill, these are developed through training. So people need to develop their speed, their agility, their coordination. And that only comes through training, not general day to day level. So we're going to look into the components a little bit more specifically now, and particularly in relation to which sports they're best suited to and also their definitions. It's worth noting every single athlete requires each of those 11 components, but in different proportions. So if we take, for example, two runners, a 100 meter sprinter and a marathon runner, although they're both running, the sprinter would clearly need a high level of speed and power. Whereas the marathon runner would equally need more cardiovascular endurance. In this example of the sumo wrestler and the jockey, the sumo wrestler would obviously need a high proportion of fat, which comes under the body composition element of components, whereas the jockey needs a lower level of fat. 
so that they are lighter when they're on that horse. So let's look at the definitions then. So cardiovascular endurance, also known as aerobic endurance, is the ability to exercise the whole body for long periods of time without tiring. So it's the whole body working for long periods without fatigue setting in. It's best suited, therefore, to endurance-based events such as marathon runner, so that they can sustain a long period of time during their event and maintain a consistent work rate. Muscular endurance is using the same group of voluntary muscles, biceps, triceps, quadriceps, hamstrings, all those voluntary muscles repeatedly, again, without tiring or without fatigue. Again, this is best suited to endurance-based sports that use the same set of muscles over and over again. So you'll notice the difference between cardiovascular is the whole body. Muscular endurance is a specific set of muscles, such as cycling, where you're using your leg muscles all the time, or rowing, where the arms are used quite regularly. Muscular strength, and it's important we know the difference between this and muscular endurance, is the ability to exert a muscular force, so using your muscles, to overcome a resistance. Now in these examples, the resistance are two different things. In the gymnastics, the resistance is gravity, trying to push the gymnast's legs down. So his body is working against that. Whereas in the rugby example, the resistance they're trying to overcome is an opponent who's also using muscular strength against you. Flexibility is the ability to move a joint and the muscles around that joint to their full range or their full potential. There are three examples we've used here. The most obvious is gymnastics, where the body is getting into certain positions where their limbs are reaching to their full capability. But equally, things like climbing and equally badminton, where you've got to lunge and stretch within that sport. Having a good level of flexibility also prevents injuries which can happen from trying to push your body and your joints to their full range. Now, body composition is probably a new one that most of you have not heard before. But this is the ability to maintain the correct ratio of body fat compared to lean mass. Lean mass is muscle and bone, so anything that's not body fat. That allows for optimal performance. Again, we've used the same examples of a jockey and a sumo wrestler, each performer has a different amount of fat compared to lean mass ratio. And each performer has an optimal particular body composition that allows them to perform at their best. So a sumo wrestler clearly needs a higher ratio of body fat compared to the jockey. Because it allows him to perform to the best of his ability in his event. And the same goes for the jockey. The lower level body fat would be a better Now, balance is the ability to retain the body's centre of mass above the base of support. And this generally means being able to maintain stable, okay, whilst either moving or static. It's important that we understand the difference between static balance and dynamic balance. So static balance is remaining stable whilst stationary. So the gymnast, when trying to do this move on the beam, is trying to remain balanced whilst staying stable on the beam. Dynamic balance is slightly different. It means that you remain balanced, but you are moving. So for example, we've got the goalkeeper in yellow in netball trying to defend on one foot. She's got to remain balanced, but she is moving at the same time. Agility is the ability to change the position of the body quickly whilst maintaining control. So there's an element of balance with agility. Now, this can be seen most readily when you are trying to outwit an opponent, something or an activity or a sport where you're trying to move around an obstacle, or equally, when you're trying to return a shot, it might be in tennis. The examples we've used here are rugby and basketball, where you're constantly trying to move away from your opponents, either to avoid being tackled or to lose possession of the ball. Coordination is the ability to use two or more body parts together. Now, there's plenty of examples in sport of this. Coordination is used in pretty much every sport. But a really good example is serving in tennis, where you've got to combine a number of different elements, such as throwing the ball in the air, viewing the ball in the air, and then striking the ball with your other hand. 
This is a perfect example of coordination in sport. Now, power is a combination of strength and speed, and it's there to release maximum force quickly. It's really important that you don't confuse this with just strength. Power is a combination of strength and speed, so release and strength very, very quickly. Two really good examples of this that are in athletics, such as javelin and shot put, where you are trying to transfer that speed and that strength into power to get the equipment as far as possible. A good way to remember power is think about the equation power equals strength times speed. Now reaction time is the ability to respond to a stimulus as quickly as possible. Now in sport there are many different stimulus that you have to react to and the examples we've used here is a 100 meter runner who would have to respond very quickly to the starting pistol or a goalkeeper responding to the stimulus of their opponent having a shot at goal. It could be a penalty, it could be a free kick or it could be an open play. Each of these athletes have got to respond as quickly as possible in order to gain an advantage. Speed. Now speed can be subdivided into two sections. Speed is the ability to cover a distance or perform a singular action in as short a time as possible. Speed that most of us will understand is whole body speed. So covering a given distance quickly, be it 100 metres, 200 metres, running in football, rugby, whatever it may be. However, limb speed is just as important, which refers to moving a limb as quickly as possible to gain that advantage. So if you think about in cricket, the bowler is trying to generate as much speed as he can in his arm in order to release that ball as quickly as possible. Equally, the batsman must react and then generate as much speed with his, arm, his arms in order to hit the ball as far as he can. So it's really important you understand the difference between whole body speed and limb speed. Now, this brings us to the end, but let's see if we can know more and remember more. Try and test yourself. Looking at those pictures, can you identify and list down all 11 components of fitness? Could you define each of the 11 components of fitness either by writing it down or verbally telling somebody what each one of those components is? And lastly, can you explain how each component is best suited to a particular sport or a sporting action and discuss how this impacts performance? You can use the examples of the pictures detailed above or you can use completely new sports. An example would be speed is best suited to a 100 meter sprint athlete as it allows them to cover the distance in as short a time possible. And the whole objective of a 100 meter race is to cover that as quickly as you can and then obviously that would allow you to win the race. So give yourself those three questions. Take some time, use a piece of paper, see if you can list them down, see if you can complete those definitions and see if you can give some examples. And hopefully that will send you or prepare you Ready very well for the next section, which is going to be looking at fitness testing. As always, any questions, please contact myself here at Brighouse High School. You've all got my email address. Apart from that, good luck, stay safe, and enjoy.